Though Street Fighter has seen a few big bad guys at this point, none have even come close to garnering the impact or fan appreciation of M. Bison. Despite not being the franchise's original main antagonist, as well as being replaced as such after his initial appearance in Street Fighter 2, the evil dictator easily maintains the heavyweight title of Street Fighter's villain to general audiences. Of course! That said, Capcom has chosen not to write Bison back into the story for Street Fighter VI, at least not yet, as he's not on the starting roster nor part of the first batch of planned DLC characters. Now you could argue that Bison hasn't quite reached the Street Fighter non-negotiable status of Ken, Ryu, Chun-Li, or perhaps Akuma, but you don't have to look very far or wide to find examples of fans hoping for their beloved wrongdoer to return at some point. We're taking a look over the character's canonical history to help assess whether or not he can and should eventually be added to the latest game's roster as we examine the full story of M. Bison leading into Street Fighter VI. There's very little information on M. Bison before the events of the Street Fighter games, but we do have some general facts that offer a bit of background. It's said that he was originally a young martial artist with overwhelming ambitions, you know, like a Street Fighter character, and that he trained under a master with two other unnamed students. Now, these students were taught in the ways of soul power primarily, but also its balancing counterpart, psycho power, an energy that only Bison's master had learned to wield at this point. Long, widely unknown story short, Bison gravitates towards psycho power, which feeds off of fear, anger, hatred, and chaos, and winds up murdering his master and setting out to travel the world to ultimately become the strongest and most powerful fighter in it. You know, like a Street Fighter character. Bison goes around becoming more powerful, killing people's fathers on Tuesdays, and gaining followers until he eventually becomes the leader of the evil Shadaloo crime syndicate and recruits a big tough Muay Thai guy named Sagat who seems to be the best in the business. Sagat loses in a big tournament to some nobody named Ryu, however, and so Bison decides he wants to capture this Ryu figure so that he can transfer his own soul into Ryu's more potentially powerful body. That brings us to the events of Street Fighter Alpha, where we find that Bison has pissed a ton of people off and thus has become the main aim of a bunch of revenge quests. The story doesn't seem super linear here and is instead told in snippets, and so we'll do our best to recap. Bison's two major aims seem to be at world domination and immortality, and he's attending to the second by creating clone bodies that he can eventually transfer his soul into as his current one is deteriorating thanks to the stress of constant psychopower usage. Without thinking about how many horrible failed experiments it took, Bison scientists eventually create Kami, a perfectly genetically engineered assassin who will be used to do Bison's bidding until he needs to use her body as his own. Though Kami starts out as a totally mind-controlled puppet, she begins to break free from her mental hold during Street Fighter Alpha and moves to also free her fellow Bison Dolls, a group of young brainwashed women who have been abducted from their homes and forced to fight for the big baddie. Then you also have Chun-Li, an up-and-coming Interpol agent who is trying to stop Shadaloo. She encounters Bison, gets her ass kicked, and Bison then tells her as he's fleeing that he's the one responsible for killing her dad long ago, and so now it's extra on with her. We also learn that Bison tried to extract all the positive energy from his being at one point, and in doing so wound up creating the fortune-telling character with whom he shares a soul, Rose. Rose uses soul power and actually defeats Bison during Alpha by punching a hole through his chest and depositing her soul energy into him, but she finds out later that he somehow secretly survived the ordeal. Also, Bison finds, fights, and beats up Ryu, temporarily taking control of his mind. Ryu's buddies as well as Sagat, who's had a change of heart since Street Fighter 1 for some reason, I guess you didn't see that video. Show up and shake him out of it though, and Ryu is then able to nail Bison with a Metsu Shoryuken, forcing him to retreat back to his evil lair where he uses his Psycho Drive machine to heal back up. Kami, Chun-Li, Guile, and Charlie Nash launch an assault on Bison's base at this point, ultimately destroying it and killing Bison, though Nash is killed in the process as well. Bison's soul then goes into Rose's body until his scientists can make him a new body that looks just like his old one, only not as powerful by the way, so that he can participate in Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 2 is super vague when it comes to story, but essentially Bison bounces back from Alpha and puts on the second World Warrior Tournament to attract super strong warriors with Ryu being the highest prize. There are a few conflicting story threads that emerge here, one of which says that Akuma appears at the end of the tournament 
and kills Bison with the soul-destroying Raging Demon technique. Another sees Team Good Guys chase M. Bison out into the wilderness where he commits a kind of psycho kamikaze instead of being taken into custody. Either way, he's dead. Until the events of Street Fighter 4 where one of Bison's many mass-produced clone bodies, Seth, becomes sentient, takes over Shadaloo, and puts on a third World Warrior tournament to attract super strong World Warriors with Ryu being the highest prize. Anyways, plot twist, Bison's soul is still floating around, and eventually it gets transplanted into yet another OG Bison body, again still weaker than his original Alpha one. He has some low consequence interactions with a handful of characters that really just serve to make them and us hate him more, but is ready to take back over the mantle of main franchise bad guy after Seth is defeated by Ryu, and he very much does so in Street Fighter V. Now, Bison has gotten control over his organization again and is launching into his next big plan for taking over the world, Operation Chains. This involves a handful of Black Moon satellites that will beam down concentrated psycho power into major cities on the planet and cause everyone to fall into chaos and kill each other, thus fueling Bison psycho power to a level never imaginable before. But Team Good Guys find out about this plan and decide to try to stop it. This is done through two major moves. The first is that Charlie Nash is resurrected and Frankenstein back together by the secret Illuminati Society. They're able to grant Nash this mysterious new ability to absorb power, which will be important later on. Operation Chain starts to take effect and causes a ton of chaos to resonate throughout the Earth, ultimately making Bison super buff as he enhances his psycho power. He eventually does run into Nash and ultimately defeats him, but Nash absorbs a ton of Bison's power in the process, leaving him in a weakened state. Meanwhile, Ryu has become an absolute badass by this point and winds up taking on Bison and killing him with a Hadouken infused with the power of nothingness. Bison laughs maniacally while his body disintegrates and dies. Like, like maybe for real this time as he doesn't appear at all in the events of Street Fighter 3, which happens next on the timeline. Okay, and that brings us to modern times, where Street Fighter 6 will pick up the story. Bison is still gone, and there's a new big bad guy named JP who, get this, puts on a World Warrior tournament to attract super strong World Warriors. Obviously a very original guy. Something that's not so original about him, however, is the fact that JP uses Psycho Power. Now, yes, there have been a few characters that have popped up over the years like Ed and Falk who use Psycho Power as well, but they've all been clones that were made directly from Bison's DNA. We don't know much at all about JP's backstory, but he's definitely an old man who's been around for a good while. Recall that before Bison, it was only his master who had the ability to wield Psycho Power, and he taught this only to Bison and two other unnamed students. While it could be that JP is yet another Bison clone, it's more likely and way more interesting at this point that he's one of Bison's training peers. Does that imply that Bison will be back in SF6? No, but Bison is a mega popular character in the franchise and you know there'd be more than a few people who'd like to see him either throw down or team up with an old college roommate. We've no doubt that Capcom could easily write around high stakes narrative points that they've already established to finagle a financially fruitful figure back into their franchise, you know, like a Street Fighter character. Chime in with your thoughts and hopes in terms of what you'd like to see from M. Bison in the comments below. I've been John Velociraptor Guerrero for Event Hubs. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.